So today's workout, um, I do some heavy deadlifts and uh, some shoulders. The audio didn't get recorded at the gym, so I'm going to do some commentary and just some thoughts on my workout. So I started off with a staggered hex bar deadlifts. It's been a while since I've done uh, deadlifts and um, uh, the hex bar was just lying around and so I kind of felt like going heavy and challenging myself. Uh, doing four reps each side or each staggered position. Um, so I did a couple of warm-up sets with just the bar, then uh, with 135 and then with uh, 225. Uh, I consider 315 to be, I guess, my first working set. After that, did some, uh, what, did the same thing with, how much is 315 plus 50? 365. So yeah, um, the staggered position, uh, I felt like I was really able to isolate the glute of the front leg. So um, I guess if uh, you're feeling an uneven contraction between uh, glutes when you're doing a regular uh, deadlift or a regular hex bar deadlift uh, using a staggered position at least in my case I was able to feel the contraction a lot better on uh, the forward glute in a staggered position this was my heaviest set I uh, went with uh, 405 um, like when I'm initially just pulling on the bar, I'm trying to develop tension and just uh, notice any weak links before I actually proceed with uh, pulling the weight. And then tighten those up before I pull the weight. Um, I've never really done uh, staggered uh, hex bar deadlifts before. Uh, I've been noticing it in some MMA training videos. And so I thought I'd uh, throw it into my uh, workout today. Um, but yeah, uh, over here I needed uh, to grab napkins to get uh, more grip on the hex bar. Um, in the previous set, like I, didn't, I don't usually use chalk or, or I don't carry chalk with me. If I had chalk, I would use it. Um, I just use uh, napkins uh, whenever my hands get sweaty. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I personally, like, I don't think it's any better than chalk or anything, but it gets the job done. Um, but yeah, this was my heaviest set. Uh, after that, I didn't do any, like, back off sets or anything. I just uh, immediately moved into uh, some shoulders. For shoulders, I did uh, uh, four sets of this giant set. Uh, so I started off with... Uh, landmine shoulder presses so you'll notice that uh, when I'm doing the shoulder presses I'm making sure that I come down really slowly so after going heavy on the hex bar deadlifts I didn't really feel like challenging um, myself with heavy load anymore so instead I decided to uh, so there's multiple ways you can, I guess, load a muscle. So one of them is you can uh, just use absolute like heavy load and try to move it through a range of motion. But uh, outside of that, you can also do uh, tempo changes. So how long can you um, perform a rep? So for example, there are people who will do a pull-up, but they have to do the pull-up so slowly that by the end of one minute they've only done one pull up but the whole time they're like pulling themselves up super slowly such that they finished one pull up at the end of one minute so similarly um, <clears throat> what I'm doing in this case is uh, I'm not doing a minute shoulder press but I'm taking the reps really slow and um, kind of like keeping tension on the shoulder the uh, whole way through now on the left hand uh, by watching i noticed that i'm going i would say still too fast but i'm uh, 
I think on the right hand, if you were paying attention, I was going really slow. I think I was going for about uh, six to eight reps each side on the landmine shoulder presses. And then uh, supersetting one press with the other. Um, again, so I did a cannonball shoulder press instead of a regular shoulder press. Um, when you're doing a cannonball versus regular, because of the instability element, I can't handle as much weight. And uh, this kind of goes to the whole thing of uh, there's different kinds of fatigue. One of the fatigues is when you handle heavy weights. And then the other kind of fatigue is, um, I guess, rep fatigue. Anyway, so by adding an instability component, I'm able to handle lesser weight. And so I'm able to manage that heavy load fatigue but still make a challenging movement uh, for my shoulder because it has to account for the instability. Um, but yeah, so that was the second exercise of the giant set. And then after that, I went into uh, some perpendicular rows on the landmine. So I like doing uh, perpendicular rows on the landmine because of the angle at which it comes up. So the angle of the the way the load of uh, uh, the landmine moves, what ends up happening is at the top position of the upright road, there's a lot more direct tension on the medial delt. And so I feel a much deeper contraction in the medial delt when doing a landmine upright row as opposed to any other kind of upright row. Um, but since the landmine was a little heavy, uh, I did five reps each side of the upright row and then kind of did a drop set with alternating uh, kettlebell uh, upright rows um, so that I could exhaust the medial delts. So yeah, four exercises uh, back to back. Uh, this was a giant set or a quad set. Um, did it for about, I, I believe, four sets, and this was the uh, second part of my workout. After this, I went into, I guess, what's called some kettlebell juggling or kettlebell flow, and I'll show you what that is here. So, uh, I've been, there's this guy that I follow named Nsima Yang. Uh, from Mark Bell's Power Project, and uh, uh, he's been getting into kettlebell juggling, and uh, I've, I guess, been inspired by that to try it out, and so I'm slowly learning some of the basic moves um, by just practicing with kettlebells, and so this is, I guess, a side-to-side -side throw with a vertical flip. Um, I like doing stuff like this because it uh, helps me uh, use my body as a unit and um, so like very often with like lifts that are tra the traditional lifts you have all these cues that are like okay tighten your back uh, but on the uh, but on this whatever chair or the ah, on the bench yeah but on the bench and neck here and everything is so rigid and you're trying to isolate a specific muscle group so you you're unable to use while you get stronger you start losing the ability to flow and just move weight through your body and uh, like absorb impact redirect impact and so sometimes what i like to do is just flow with a kettlebell where I'm just doing random exercises with no particular rep range, but moving from one to the other, um, uh, like one exercise to the other, kind of free flowing, not really thinking about what's being worked or what's not being worked. Uh, my goal pretty much is to just pick random movements and keep doing them till my body hits exhaustion. And if I drop it in the middle, it's not a big deal. I just pick it up and go right back into it. Uh, the goal is just to get to exhaustion. Um, 
and the reason for doing this today was uh, on days that I handle heavy weights, there is a sort of exhaustion that I feel. Uh, so instead of like doubling down on that kind of exhaustion, I like to manage that fatigue by doing something light, but that's taxing. That's more like skill, uh, skill building. So kettlebell juggling requires a lot of coordination, a lot of like m a lot of, I guess, technique, but uh, the technique is more in the ability to keep your joints loose and like recognize how the weight of the kettlebell is moving as you throw it and then as you catch it and how to move it from your arms to or how to move the impact from your arms into your legs and then redirect it back uh, uh, and things like that. <clears throat> and so once you get good at that, like, so over here in this movement that I'm doing, I was like using my obliques plus shoulders and biceps to be able to do that. But there's there's no real movements outside of like these things that would force you to use your body that way and um, if you don't use your body that way you don't recognize how you can combine force from a uh, contraction of multiple different muscle groups so for the most popular example of this can be like uh, olympic weightlifting where uh, deadlift force is transferred into the arms and so on and so forth uh, but yeah, like uh, instead of just doing traditional lifting, I like to throw something like this in uh, to get that kind of training in uh, without uh, necessarily having to do weight lifting so that I can recognize using my whole body as a unit. Um, yeah, but that's all for today's workout. I did the sauna after. But yeah, see you all in the next workout. Hopefully the audio records next time. Peace.